So on Keystone, now that we have a decision, can you uh, describe a little bit for us exactly when the State Department finished the review, when it got to the President, uh, a little bit about how we got to where we got to today? Mm -hmm. Well, Darlene, as, uh, as you uh, obviously noted, uh, the State Department concluded a years-long review of the Keystone Pipeline project, and they determined that construction of the project would uh, not serve the national interest of the United States. Now, I know there are many people who have expressed their disagreement with that conclusion. Uh, those proponents of the project uh, often say that this project would um, contribute to uh, our energy security, that it would lower gas prices, and it would be uh, good for the economy. Uh, but the fact is this rigorous State Department review that you all have now seen concluded that the impact of the project on all of those factors is negligible. Uh, the one significant impact we know that the project would have is in undermining the ability of the President of the United States and other senior U.S. officials who have enjoyed great success in going around the world and convincing other countries to follow the lead of the United States in making a significant commitment to fighting climate change and curbing carbon pollution. Here's why that's significant. For decades, critics of U.S. efforts to cut carbon pollution said that it was foolish for the United States to pursue those kinds of policies on our own. They said it didn't make sense for the United States to be trying to cut our carbon footprint if China and Brazil and Japan and South Korea and Australia and a bunch of European economies weren't willing to do the same thing. Well, now we actually have seen that China and Brazil and Japan and South Korea and Australia and a bunch of European economies are willing to do the same thing. And the reason they're willing to do the same thing is because they've taken a close look at what's happening here in the United States and acknowledged that here in the United States, business as usual when it comes to uh, our energy policy is not acceptable. Uh, and that because of the changes that we've put in place, uh, other countries have made a significant uh, commitment. Uh, and to build a pipeline project that would incentivize the extraction of some of the dirtiest oil uh, on the planet and facilitate its efficient transport to the United States would undermine that case. Uh, and that ultimately is, uh, uh, is the conclusion that was reached by the State Department, and it was the conclusion that the President uh, agreed with. You know, over the years that the State Department has been uh, considering this project, the, uh, the White House has received periodic updates, uh, but the President received the final determination uh, from Secretary Kerry this morning uh, in their meeting. In 2013, when the President gave his speech laying out his climate agenda, he said at the time that the litmus test for Keystone would be um, to reject it if it would significantly, significantly increase carbon emissions. Today, he seemed to be railing a lot against how politicized the whole process um, had become. Did he, in effect, sort of change the standard by which he would have judged that project? Uh, he did not, uh, Darlene. In fact, in the very next sentence of that speech, uh, he said the net effect, <coughs> pardon me, the net effects of the pipeline's impact on our climate will be absolutely critical to determining whether this project is allowed to go forward. Uh, and the impact of the project, as determined by this rigorous review, is that the impact on things like energy security and gas prices and the U.S. economy uh, were negligible. Uh, the most significant impact and the net effect of this project moving forward uh, is to undermine our ability to persuade other countries to follow our lead when it comes to fighting climate change. Uh, and the consequences for that are significant. Uh, as I described earlier, uh, our critics have suggested that this was a key part of the strategy for fighting climate change and that for the United States to try to pursue this on our own uh, would be an exercise in futility. Uh, the fact is we have built an important international uh, effort uh, in this regard. And um, so uh, you know, the, the, the determination is consistent with uh, the standard that the, that the President had set. How much of the um, decision is related to the upcoming climate talks in Paris and wanting to kind of get the Keystone issue off the table before he goes there? Well, uh, for the precise 
decision about the timing uh, of releasing this report, you should go to the State Department because it was obviously a, pro a, a process that they were running. But given the fact that so much of their conclusion rested upon the impact that this decision would have on international deliberations on climate change, uh, it seems obvious to me that the authors of this report were mindful of the upcoming uh, international meeting to discuss climate change. Okay. Jeff. Josh, is the White House concerned about a potential lawsuit from TransCanada about this decision? Well, I, I'm not aware of uh, what sort of legal standing they may assert uh, in pressing those kinds of claims. So uh, I'm certainly not aware of any plans that they may have. Um, but. Uh, I suppose you should ask them. Is there anything in this decision that would prevent TransCanada from applying again, either with this administration or with a future administration? Uh, I don't know the answer to that, Jeff, in terms of what would sort of govern their ability to resubmit an application. Uh, you should check with the State Department about that. The President mentioned uh, his desire to, to deepen the relationship between the United States and Canada mm -hmm. and said that officials from both sides would be meeting soon. Um, what does that mean exactly? What exactly would, does he expect those officials to accomplish and what would you like to see? Well, I don't know that the President necessarily had a specific uh, uh, meeting in mind, but I do think the President continues to be hopeful uh, that the United States and Canada can build on the already strong working relationship we have with them when pursuing the uh, interests of citizens in both of our countries. And um, I do know that Prime Minister Trudeau uh, did spend more time in the context of his campaign talking about his commitment to taking more aggressive action to uh, confront climate change. And uh, if there's an opportunity for the United States and Canada to deepen our cooperation in that pursuit, uh, we certainly would welcome a conversation on that topic. Did the President plan to meet with the Prime Minister at the G20 or at the Paris Climate Summit? Uh, I don't have an update on the President's schedule at this point, but we'll obviously keep you posted. All right. Let's move around. Richard. Thank you, Josh. Um, Prime Minister Trudeau, in his reaction, uh, said he was disappointed, uh, but he acknowledged that the relationship between the United States and Canada is much wider than this project. Um, and he says he's impatient to meet the President uh, in the near future for a new beginning in a spirit of friendship and collaboration. Would you, would you say there's a, it's a new beginning? The project is on the side. There's a new Prime Minister. We'd say there's a new beginning in the relationship between the two countries. <laughs> Well, I think that's an apt description. I, I don't think, if, when I use that word, I, it certainly wouldn't be uh, intended to diminish uh, the important relationship that U.S. and Canada enjoyed while Prime Minister Harper was in office. Uh, obviously, Prime Minister Harper had uh, effective working relationships with both President Bush and, and President Obama. Uh, but there is a new prime minister uh, in Canada. There's a new government uh, in Canada. And obviously, this uh, project that has gotten so much attention is uh, no longer at the so prominently featured on the agenda. And uh, th that may create some additional new opportunities uh, for our two countries to work together. And uh, if those opportunities exist, uh, this administration and certainly this president will not hesitate to, to seize them. There's a hopeful tone in the prime minister's uh, communique that you haven't seen maybe, but do you see this hopefulness? Uh, do you feel it? Sure. Well, the, the, the President certainly is optimistic uh, about the kind of um, continuing um, cooperation that will be enjoyed uh, by the United States and Canada. And there are a variety of ways in which uh, that cooperation is critically important. Obviously, the uh, United States and Canada have a significant uh, economic relationship. Uh, the economies of, uh, of our two countries are closely intertwined. Um, obviously, the United States and Canada enjoy significant uh, national security um, uh, ties uh, and a cooperative relationship that benefits the national security of both of our countries. Um, and if there is an opportunity for us, as I mentioned to Jeff, if there is an opportunity for us to deepen our cooperation in uh, fighting climate change, uh, which based on his campaign rhetoric sounds like something that Prime Minister Trudeau might be open to, we certainly would welcome the opportunity to uh, cooperate on that priority. Secondly, uh, this conversation this, mor this morning um, was just, again, the second since the uh, Prime Minister has been elected. That's correct. Uh, last but, it was, but it was their first opportunity to talk about the Keystone Pipeline project. 
Thank you very much. Well, well, by the way, was it? Do you know how long it was? Was a conversation? Uh, I don't know how long the conversation lasted, but we can follow up with you on that. Last question. You, you underlined pretty clearly that uh, it, this project uh, was undermining and would have undermined had it been approved. Uh, this argument towards other countries in fighting um, uh, uh, <coughs> climate change. So, would you say that the, finally this project and the, this this very aspect of the Canadian relation, the, the relationship with Canada, has been sacrificed for you know in the hope of uh, helping uh, the the present uh, uh, climate change agenda was sacrificed for this. No, I wouldn't describe it that way. Primarily because of you know what we were talking about earlier that the the president continues to be. Um, quite optimistic about the health and future prospects uh, of a strong U.S.-Canada relationship. And uh, based on the, the communique that uh, Prime Minister Trudeau issued, uh, it, 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 it's apparent that he shares that optimism. And um, the President and his team are looking forward to uh, getting to work to seize that opportunity. Okay. Cheryl. On Keystone, um, the argument was often made that I think 40,000 jobs would be created by this project, temporary though they may be. Um, what was the finding about that? Is that true? Mm -hmm. Well, you can take a look at the, um, uh, at, at the actual report. Uh, and there is a, a, a job creation analysis in there. Uh, in terms of permanent jobs, uh, their conclusion is that this would create a grand total of 35 permanent jobs uh, here in the United States. The overall economic impact uh, of this project would be of 0.02 percent, right. which is why you, I described the e broader economic impact of the project as negligible based on the robust analysis that was performed by the State Department. I think some would argue that 40,000 jobs, though they temporary, are significant, especially if you don't have a job. Well, I think those who make that argument uh, are principally those who, or at least many of them, have uh, blocked the administration's proposal to make a robust investment in our infrastructure uh, that would actually create more than a million and a half new jobs over 10 years. Um, so the fact of the matter is this is a proposal that is fully paid for, uh, it is a proposal that deserves bipartisan support and makes investments all across the country in infrastructure projects that benefit everybody. So if those who are uh, making that argument are actually interested in working with the administration to create jobs based on uh, investments in infrastructure, I've got a great idea where they can start uh, their efforts, and that's on uh, by focusing on the Grow America Act. First on Keystone, you mentioned, or the President mentioned today, that um, gasoline prices, frankly, have already fallen uh, in the, uh, the long, years-long review. Is it the administration's contention that they wouldn't fall farther? Had this pipeline been approved? Uh, that is the conclusion of the of the report, that the impact on gas prices in the United States is negligible. Okay. Last. Uh, getting back to Keystone, uh, the President said uh, throughout this process on several occasions uh, that the main criteria for approving the project would be that if the pipeline did not uh, contribute to climate change. And uh, during um, some comments made by some senior administration officials uh, this morning, State Department officials this morning, and I think not just this morning, but in, in the latest environmental assessments of the pipeline, it was stated that, that the project would not have an overall effect on emissions. And uh, Secretary Kerry said in his statement uh, this morning that, that the main uh, driving force behind his recommendation was that he didn't want to undermine the United States' ability to lead the world on climate change. So if the President's, uh, I guess, key determining factor on whether to approve this project was whether it was going to contribute to climate change, and that did not pan out, and that the Secretary seems to be saying that this has to do with undermining our ability to lead the world, was this a PR move? Uh, no, it was not, Jim. And I, 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 uh, I differ with some the, of these? Yeah, I do. I, I differ with the premise of your question. Um, you know, I noted in an earlier uh, exchange that uh, in the President's speech that he delivered at Georgetown, he said that the net effects of the pipeline's impact on our climate will absolutely be critical to determining whether this project is allowed to go forward. And the net effect of this project uh, is not a substantial impact on gas prices or energy security or the U.S. economy or even uh, a direct impact on climate change. But the net effect is actually that it undermines the ability of the United States 
to continue to lead the international community to respond to this urgent challenge. And even the sharpest critics of climate change policy in the past have acknowledged that the United States can't go this one alone, that we're going to need to persuade other countries, to use our influence around the world to persuade other countries uh, to take important steps to uh, reduce carbon pollution. Uh, the, so, I, so I think that's how I would uh, answer your question, and that's you know, why the that was not the stated criteria all along through this process. The that was the, it was the stated criteria that the president, when the president delivered a major environmental said, speech at Georgetown. said it was whether it, the project would contribute to climate change. And the determination of the State Department is that the pipeline would not have contributed to climate change. So I'll read you another quote, Jim, just because I came prepared here. Uh, as a policy. I thought that this question might come. Uh, I did. Uh, as a policy matter, my government believes that we should judge this pipeline based on whether or not it accelerates climate change or whether it helps the American people with their energy costs and their gas prices. The impact on energy costs and their gas prices is negligible, according to this report. Uh, and the fact is, it would make it more difficult for the U.S. government to succeed in fighting the causes of climate change because it undermines our ability to persuade other countries around the world to uh, join our effort. So again, the president, the president never, laid this out. The president never said that, that the key determining factor was whether the project would contribute to climate change. I, I don't, I've never heard the president say that direct quote. Uh, maybe you have one there in front of you. I've read you two direct quotes of what the president said that certainly substantiate both the results of the review and my explanation for uh, their determination. Um, and, uh, just to get back to this, this uh, uh, comment that the president made, I, I mean, I'm just going through the Google here as we're talking. Okay. And he said on Colbert, last year, we've got to make sure that it's not adding to the problem of carbon and climate change. It could create a couple of thousand potential jobs in the initial construction, but we've got to measure that against whether or not it's going to contribute to an overall warming of the planet that could be disastrous. Mm -hmm. I'm just, so I, I'm just wondering for the last, so yeah. you're saying that the, I'm, you know, this is, there's obviously going to be a document transcript of this briefing. You're saying that the president did not make that the stated goal of this this uh, process of determining whether or not to read the last it. sentence again. We've got to we've got to measure that against whether or not it's going to contribute to an overall warming of the planet that could be disastrous. Yeah. Right. And so we are engaged in an international effort to build uh, uh, build a policy response that reduces carbon pollution and fights climate change. And that's not something that the United States can do it alone. If those are policies that we only implement in the United States. It will not have the desired effect of preventing a warming planet. The only way that we're going to succeed on this, and this is something that our harshest critics themselves regularly acknowledge, is the only way we're going to be successful is if we can get the rest of the international community, including the largest economies of the world, uh, to go along with us. Uh, and that's uh, the construction of this pipeline would undermine that effort. Okay? Sarah. Thanks, Josh. Um, on Keystone, uh, the President has consistently criticized both sides for overhyping the significance of, of the pipeline. Um, but uh, as we've just been discussing, it, um, it has now been rejected because of the symbolism of it. And so can they, those two things seem a little, a little hard to reconcile, that on the one hand, it's, it's overblown, but it's also symbolically crucial. Does the President see both of those things as being the case? Well, I, I think, Sarah, the, the point that the President has tried to make is that we have heard outsized claims uh, from advocates on both sides of this issue, frankly, uh, about the true impact uh, of this pipeline. And the State Department spent years reviewing this project to try to determine the true impact. Uh, the fact is, despite the claims of advocates of the pipeline, it wouldn't have much of an impact at all on gas prices. It wouldn't have much of an impact at all on energy security. And the impact on the broader U.S. economy is 0.02 percent uh, when it comes to, uh, to GDP. So uh, you know, that, that, that's one side. There are some on the side of uh, those who oppose the pipeline who said that the pipeline itself would contribute significantly to, um, uh, uh, to climate change. Uh, and again, based on the careful review that was done at the State Department, uh, there's reason to doubt that too. Uh, but what there's not reason to doubt, and what the diplomatic experts at the State Department have concluded, is that the ability of U.S. officials to make the case to other countries around the world that they 
can't just continue to pursue business as usual and need to, need to actually implement policy changes that will reduce carbon pollution would be undermined if the United States uh, was just going to pursue business as usual. Um, look, this goes back to a basic um, tenet of this presidency. Uh, the president's campaign slogan in 2007 and 2008 wasn't stay the course. It was change you can believe in. Uh, and that's, again, that's, that's part of what this is about. One of the reasons that we have been able to make so much progress uh, in just the last uh, few years is because of our willingness to um, implement change. So we've made tremendous progress uh, in um, investing in renewable energy. Uh, if we just sort of stayed the course and looked to uh, develop additional sources of oil and gas um, in the United States and around the world, um, that would have been one option. But by investing in renewable energy, you know, we're in a, in a place where we have tripled the amount of energy that's being produced in the United States by the wind uh, and increased the amount of energy that's being produced uh, by the sun 20-fold just since this president took office. Uh, the same is true when it comes to energy efficiency. The president made a, has made a series of important commitments to energy efficiency, both in terms of uh, fuel standards for cars and trucks, but also when it comes to uh, energy standards that are in place for home appliances and even for buildings. And because of those, that commitment to efficiency, uh, last year in 2014, the United States actually used less oil and gas than we did as a country in 2008, despite the fact that our, a country, that our economy uh, has grown in that period of time. Uh, those, those kinds of investments are worthwhile and would not have been possible had the President not been willing to institute some changes. Um, I, I'll, I'll close by saying this is not unique to the energy sector. Uh, there's been a willingness to uh, take on special interests when it comes to Wall Street reform. Uh, and you know, we now have a financial system that is more stable and never again will taxpayers be on the hook for bailing out a big bank because of risky bets that they've made. Uh, the President uh, got a lot of criticism from uh, the cable companies uh, for weighing in on the net neutrality uh, debate. Um, but, you know, but ultimately, the, the President was, uh, uh, was speaking his mind. And that willingness to um, royal the special interests uh, with the goal of trying to advance um, uh, the President's agenda uh, is, frankly, the central premise of his presidency. So I'll follow to that and then one other. Um, um, if, if Shell hadn't pulled out of, of the Arctic, would the decision to approve Arctic drilling have been symbolically problematic in the same way that proving Keystone would have been? Mm -hmm. Well, the fact is that the, the well that Shell was drilling in the Arctic um, earlier this year uh, was actually a lease that was uh, acquired by Shell under the Bush administration. Uh, and this administration recently announced steps to cancel lease sales uh, in the Arctic in 2016 and 2017. So. Again, I, I think our policy as it relates to the Arctic is entirely consistent with the uh, decision that was announced today. And then stepping back, um, going uh, uh, to Paris, um, kind of big picture, does the President see himself as, as trying to save the world with what he's working on there? <laughs> well, I think what the President sees himself trying to do uh, is to continue to mobilize the international community to respond to the urgent threat that is posed by climate change. And I think this is you know, one of those situations where the unique role of the United States in the international community uh, comes into play. In the United States, given the size of our economy, uh, given the stability of our economy, and given our influence uh, around the globe, is uniquely positioned to convince other countries to take significant steps to cut carbon pollution. And um, those countries were only willing to make those commitments once they saw that the United States wasn't just talking the talk, that we were willing to walk the walk. Uh, and I think this is sort of the uh, latest evidence of our willingness to walk the walk. And that's not going to prevent the, uh, the oil companies from uh, squealing uh, and the Washington politicians that they own from squealing even louder. Uh, but it's uh, not going to intimidate the President as he uh, makes a decision that he believes is in the best interest of the country, in the best interest of our economy, in the best interest of the health of our children, but also in the best interest of the planet. Okay. Margaret. Josh, um, can you explain, I mean, this was a permit application from a corporation. 
Why did the president feel compelled to come out and speak to cameras? Well, I think all of you had the expectation that that's what he would probably do. And uh, given the uh, law that's on the books for consideration of these kinds of projects, uh, it's presidential authority that's used to determine whether or not these projects move forward. Now, there's an executive order in place that delegates that authority uh, to the State Department, but given the uh, intense scrutiny and the frequency with which he'd both discussed and been asked about this project in the past, uh, it made sense that he would be uh, involved in announcing the decision. Well, I ask you, the President used language saying this has essentially gotten blown out of proportion, saying it's gotten overinflated, um, hyped up. Mm -hmm. I mean, Elevating it further, though, by speaking about it from from the White House. Mm -hmm. So, do you, don't you wonder that whether that will make him more vulnerable to the claims that this is uh, further politicization uh, of the issue, since he made a pitch for climate agreement, made a pitch for uh, infrastructure? I think, as I mentioned earlier, the president's not at all worried about claims from the oil companies and the D.C. politicians that they own uh, that somehow uh, uh, he's not, he's done the wrong thing here. He's used to that criticism and. That's not going to intimidate him or prevent him from uh, taking uh, additional steps that he believes are necessary uh, to look out for the best interests of the country, to look out for the best interests of our economy, to look out for the best interests of the health of our children, uh, and to look out for the best interests of the planet. With all due respect, it was just a few Fridays ago when the President made the decision to put 50 special operators on the ground in Syria, and we did not hear from him. Many of us in the press did expect to. So mm -hmm. on this particular issue, it seems <coughs> very charged already, and for the President to decide to come out on it, it seems to be that there's perhaps lending some credence to those who, who say this is uh, just uh, about politics. This wasn't a policy. Either. Margaret, I don't think that the uh, amount of politics that had been injected into the situation would have been in any way diminished uh, if somehow the Secretary of State had spoken instead of the President. Josh, on the John Kerry meeting this morning, did President Obama know in advance the decision, the decision that Secretary Kerry came to tell him about? Well, uh, Mark, the uh, State Department has obviously been conducting this uh, review for a number of years now, and the White House has received periodic updates uh, on that process. Uh, and this, the President has typically been briefed uh, about those periodic uh, updates. Uh, so the first time that the President had the opportunity to consider the final determination uh, by the Secretary of State was this morning in his meeting with him. Uh, but based on the periodic updates that the White House has received over the years, uh, I don't believe that the President was at all surprised by the outcome. Well, does that mean um, the fix was in for President Obama to uh, uh, embrace Kerry's decision? Uh, no, it does not. Uh, it means that the State Department did as they should, uh, which is, based on long-established precedent, conducted a thoughtful and rigorous review of this particular infrastructure project. They made a determination uh, based on uh, their conclusions about the national interest. Uh, the President was regularly updated on uh, the progress of that review, and that's why the President wasn't surprised by the outcome. But didn't he need more than an hour to decide whether to embrace the uh the, the decision from a state? Uh, again, based on the periodic updates uh, that had been received, I think the President uh, had a good idea about the direction that this was headed. Have you got any reaction to the uh, response from uh, Speaker Ryan, who not only called the decision sickening, but he said that it goes against uh, a bipartisan majority in Congress and the will of the American people? Mm -hmm. Well, I, at least the, the reference to the word sickening, I think, is uh, Exhibit A in the case that I would make to you, that people are um, uh, overinflating, to use the President's words, the significance of, uh, of, uh, of this report. Um, but look, there's no denying that many members of Congress, including some Democrats, uh, don't agree with the President on this. Uh, but um, uh, the President and, uh, and his team have obviously thought about this uh, for quite some time. The State Department carefully considered it. Uh, and given the, president, the responsibility that the President feels, for uh, continuing to lead the international community uh, to take um, steps to fight climate change. Uh, the President believes that uh, this is the right call. And uh, back to, to pipelines. Uh, Keystone was not the only pipeline application in the waiting 
an approval to the process you described via the president. There's also the Enbridge Alberta Clipper pipeline. Can we read anything into where that decision is going to go based on the arguments and conclusions announced today? Maybe Exhibit B, uh, that the decision around the Keystone pipeline has been overhyped. Um, I can say that I can't recall ever having heard of the pipeline whose name you just recited. Um, so, uh, uh, so I, I don't know where that, uh, whether or not there is an ongoing process or not to consider uh, that project. Um, if there is, I'm confident that it will be uh, evaluated consistent with uh, the kinds of standards that are described by the, by the law. You do rightfully point out that there are thousands of miles of pipeline that have been built inside the United States since uh, President Obama took office. Uh, in fact, the southern segment of the Keystone Pipeline uh, was built uh, in, the, in the last couple of years while President Obama has been, office, been in office. So uh, you know, the argument that, uh, uh, that we're making here is, uh, is very specific, uh, but it is, uh, uh, does not mean that uh, uh, no more pipeline uh, will be constructed in this country over the next 15 months. And then lastly, opponents of the Keystone decision say that this will lead to more oil on rail, and of course the administration has acknowledged that that is likely a fact. There have been safety problems with oil on rail, and the president recently signed legislation that will delay a, a safety component for railroads to comply with. How does the president view that effect of the Keystone decision? Is this something that concerns him? Well, what you described as a fact is actually uh, the source of significant doubt based on the analysis that was done by the State Department. Uh, the State Department uh, said that the, uh, the exploitation of those uh, resources in Western Canada would likely only be economically feasible uh, if the price of oil was between $65 and $75 a barrel. And that's the that's the way that the project could be economically justified. Um, and you know, the fact is, right now, you can buy a barrel of oil for less than $50. Uh, and you know, the longer term, uh, at least the, the near and midterm projections for the price of oil, um, uh, continue to foresee uh, prices at, at or around that level. Uh, so there is significant doubt about whether or not this, uh, uh, this moves forward. Uh, that being said, I think the President's uh, commitment to um, the, safe, uh, uh, the safe transport of uh, materials like oil uh, is um, significant. And um, you know, I know that there was, uh, there was recent regulatory action uh, around uh, improving the safety of some of the rail cars that are used to transport oil uh, within the United States. Uh, and you know, that's consistent with the priority that the President and his broader administration have placed uh, on rail safety.